I have so many great stories and memories of the old Team Quest days. And I've had Ed Herman on here before, Chris Lieben, or Nate Quarry pops in, and we just tell Team Quest stories. And you guys always love it, and I always get asked, tell more, uh, tell more stories, tell more stories. And I'll tell you what, I have so many. I was there every single day and for so many years, but for some reason, when time goes on, and I'm never great at identifying what a good story is in. I never know what somebody's going to want to hear. But one very interesting story that happened, Matt Lindland. It's a Matt Lindland story. Okay, you know what? Let's back up. Scott Smith. Do you guys remember Scott Smith? I think, what, it, what, what was his ring name? Was it Scotty Too Hotty or something? But Scott Smith, very good fighter. WEC uh, champion at one point. He was also the king of the cage champion. I believe the Gladiator Challenge champion. You guys may remember king of the cage and Gladiator Challenge, they kind of work simultaneously, but that was a really big deal in the sport at one point in time. There wasn't a whole lot of opportunities out there, and those guys were putting out products and shows and, and allowing competitors a place to compete for a meaningful period. So Scott Smith had done really well in those organizations before he had his UFC days and his Strike Force days, and just a guy that I knew, but he was also a very nice guy. In addition to that, he was a bit of an extension, if you will, of Team Quest in that he was managed by Mike Roberts, who was very close with the Team Quest guys. He was personal friends with Randy Couture, who not only was the champion at Team Quest, not only the leader of the team, he also owned the gym. Now, the gym was owned by three guys, Matt Lindland, Robert Fallis, Randy Couture. So Scott Smith has a fight coming up at the time of this story. He has a fight coming up. It's a main event title defense in King of the Cage. King of the Cage is going to be on pay-per-view for the very first time, and Scott Smith's salary for this fight is going to be $5,000, which at that time made him rich by MMA standard. This is a huge, huge pay. One of the biggest paydays I'd heard of outside of one of the major organizations, which at that time was only UFC and Pride. So he's got $5,000 payday to look forward to. He comes out to Oregon. Excuse me, comes to Oregon to train. Randy Couture picks him up at the airport and takes him to his house. Scott Smith is now staying at Randy's house while he trains at the gym. Relevant to the story because the day that this story took place, Randy wasn't at the gym. Now, what they were doing was shark bait that day. And it was a three-man group. I cannot remember who the third member was. I think it was Evan Tanner. I believe the group of three was Scott Smith, Jeff Munson, Evan Tanner, Matt Lindland. Okay, four, four man group, but yourself and three other guys. I believe that was the group. And you stayed in. You were the shark bait. You stayed in and went three minutes with each guy before you came out and got arrested. The next guy goes in and he gets shark baited. Okay. Somewhere along the way, and don't forget, Matt Lindland is the number one ranked fighter in the world at the time. So for Matt to get treated differently by somebody who's coming in looking for sparring is absolutely a natural consequence of being a celebrated and decorated number one fighter in the world. Matt did not see it that way. When Matt was out watching Scott go with other guys, Matt felt Scott was sandbagging. He was saving his energy and then would go really hard against Matt. Well, I wasn't there, but I bet you that's exactly what he did do as a sign of respect to the number one fighter in the world who also happens to be a co-owner of the gym. Matt thought that that was wrong, that he should be going hard the whole time and he should not just be throwing heat at Matt when Matt comes in. So when Matt goes in, he roughs him up a little bit. And there was a point where Scott Smith is down. Matt knees him, first off, okay? Matt knees him in the face. Scott Smith goes down. Matt comes up, kicks him while he's down. This is a training session. And Matt owns the gym. So a little bit shocking on many, many levels. But Scott Smith ultimately ends up with a broken nose. A broken nose to the point that he has to pull out of his main event title fight payday on a pay-per-view of King and the King. Big deal that this happened for Scott. And he was our guest. Okay, he was our guest. Not a great moment, not a great action. So Robert talks to Matt after Robert was out of the room. He was running the practice, but he had stepped out of the room. So somebody runs and gets Robert. I think it was Chris Lieben. Robert comes running in, breaks this whole thing up. 
Scott's sitting on the wall just protecting his face and his nose, which is gushing blood. I mean, he has to go to the hospital. It's a big deal. Robert, tell, the very last thing Robert says to Matt, and Robert didn't see this, he's only hearing of it. The last thing he says is, you had better call Randy. Randy's going to find out about this, and it's best if he finds out from you. And the way they handled things at Team Quest about, uh, back then was might made right. It was never about the issues or the principles or what was... The, if you could beat up the other guy, then it was going to be your way. If the other guy could beat you up, it was going to be his way. And Matt Linland adhered to that code. As bizarre as you may find that code, that was Matt's code, and he would play it both ways. If Matt could beat you up, you had better do what he wants. But if you could beat him up, he'll go do your dry clean. He'll do whatever it is you want. He just adhered to that. So that night, Matt calls Randy. He says, hey, you know, I got to talk to you about something. And Randy goes, about you breaking Scott Smith's nose? And Matt goes, oh, you've already heard? Okay, great. Click and hangs up on him. Now, I think Matt missed the point there, but I'm telling you the story the way that it happens. So the next day when Matt pulls into the gym, and Matt was always the first one to the gym, when Matt pulls in, Robert's tr uh, car is there and Randy's truck is there. So when Matt pulls in, he thinks, oh boy, this isn't going to be good. If they're both here, that means they're waiting for me. And Matt was right. So when he walks in, there they are. Randy tells him to take a seat. So they have a talk with him and they try to talk to him, not on the terms that I'm suggesting this for you, which is, hey, we had a guest, you hurt him, you know, by the way, you own the gym. I mean, there's a way we do, not, they weren't trying to talk to him like that. They were saying, Matt, you lost your temper, okay? You kicked a guy while he was down. That's illegal. Matt was in the UFC at the time. That's illegal. Under the unified rules, you will be disqualified. You can't lose your temper. And Matt goes, oh, that's what this was about? No, 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 no. You got it all wrong. I, we were doing shark bait. I, I had watched him for three rounds, nine minutes. I had this whole thing planned out. I, I, hadn't lost, I didn't lose my temper at all. All right. Thank you, guys. And gets up to walk out. Randy, tell, sit back down. You've missed the point. And Randy gets a little more stern with him. He says, listen, if you're going to come back into the room, and Matt owns the gym. By the way, he owns the gym, but none of that matters. Nothing matters. It only is whoever can beat. Who, that, that's the code. It was code of the jungle. So Randy said, here's how this is going to work. Before you return to practice, you are going to apologize to the team. You freaked the team. You scared everybody. They watched you doing this as a leader. Illegal move, sending a guy to the hospital. You're not coming back in until you apologize. So Matt's like, do you really think that's necessary? And Randy's like, well, that's the way it's going to be. So that, that's the way it's going to be. So practice starts. And before anybody does everything, everybody walks out on the mat. They all got their gear on. Randy and Robert go out as, as leaders and owners. And they call everybody to the middle. And now Matt has to come forward and give his apology. His apology goes like this. Hey, you know, something happened yesterday. And, you know, I, I heard that some guys were saying they were scared. Was it you? And he points right in a guy's face. He goes, was it you? Were you scared? Are you the one that tattled on me? And then he turns to the next guy and goes, or was it you? Were you the one that was scared? Are you the one that went and complained? How, was it you? And he points to about four or five guys. There's only seven or eight guys there. So everybody is Matt Lindland, the owner of the gym and the baddest dude in the world at middleweight at the time, is going around the room dressing them down. Nobody said a word. Nobody raised a hand. Nobody said, yeah, it was me. Everybody just stood there and stared at him. So when Matt finally gets done with the fourth or fifth guy of saying, was it you? Nobody says anything. Matt really calmly looks up to, uh, to Randy and Robert and goes, see, I told you. Nobody was scared. Let's start practice. And we did. That is how that issue got resolved. And I have felt to this day as a member of Team Quest, even I wasn't even there. I still feel to this day that we owe Scott Smith a bit of an apology.